Hey everybody, it's Alan, and I hope that you are doing well. So clearly, as you can see right there, it's time to listen to some Megadeth. Why? Because May 5th was Sean Drover's birthday. One of the longest tenured drummers in Megadeth's history, he played on the Endgame album, which was one of my favorite, more recent Megadeth albums, and I wanted to play the title track from that in celebration of Sean's birthday. So here is Sean Drover being the drummer in Megadeth playing on the song Endgame from the album Endgame. was all around. 
So I've been saying for a long, long time, and certainly since I started this channel, well before that too, um, of the big four thrash metal bands, you know, Metallica, Megadeth, Anthrax, and Slayer, that Megadeth was my favorite. I find their music to be incredibly, incredibly interesting, the, 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 the changes, the, the, the musical, you know, um, creativity within it. I, I just, I always find it to be very, very, very engaging for, for my brain. On top of that, the lyrics are always, or at least usually thought provoking for me personally. I like a uh, narrative that is challenging. I don't necessarily agree with everything or even most of what Mustaine has to say, but he finds a way to be thought provoking. And this album came out in 2009. It's, um, it's an interesting time because within this particular song, he talks, it, there are two lyrics that always stand out to me. One, when he, he talks about the Patriot Act and how it basically aided in taking away the freedoms of um, the freedoms of citizens in regards to their privacy. And then there's another line in there where he where he refers to us as, you know, basically being part of a gigantic ant farm. And Again, I find those two lyrics to be rather thought provoking because, you know, the Patriot, Patriot Act did exactly that. I understand why it was an, an enacted. Obviously, it's post 9-11. But um, when I think about it today and the fact that basically, you know, the, the current government, you know, the current form of government that we have has uh, essentially... Um, continued to renew the active activities of the Patriot Act, uh, it, it makes you realize just exactly how it doesn't necessarily matter what kind of administration is in power. They're all basically the same entity, no matter whether you think they're left, right, progressive, liberal, whatever it is. They're all, it, it, the, the way that our government is made up right now, it's basically owned by the corporations that fund the political campaigns and basically control the narrative that we see both in mainstream media, but also through the voting records of our politicians who aren't really doing things for the citizens as much as they're doing things for their donor class. I don't care what they call it. I don't care how much the uh, the bought and paid for um, Supreme Court over the course of the last forty five years has basically legalized bribery, but but they call it campaign contributions. I'm sorry, it's friggin' bribery, and that's all there is to it. So, in a sense, we have been taken over by. Uh, the capitalist corporations, which aren't really capitalists anymore because capitalism and vulture capitalism are different things. And yet you'll never hear that in 
uh, mainstream standard corporate media that will never talk about capitalism and vulture capitalism being different things, even though vulture capitalism is what's basically destroying the integrity of our, our democratic process. Simple as that. And don't give me this democratic republic and republican bullshit. It's, 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 it's not the way the country was founded. Do your fucking homework. Okay. With that said, and I'm not trying to monetize this, so I don't care if I drop an F bomb or two. It's the, it's the stupidity of, of the, the, the followers that, that drives me up the wall. They have independent thought for once. Okay. Secondly, that line that talks about being in a gigantic ant farm, it goes exactly to what I was just talking about. The way everything is basically controlled and dictated throughout our current form of um, society in the U.S., we are basically in a gigantic ant farm. We're cogs in the wheel, okay? Uh, cogs in the machine, excuse me. And... Every single one of us, everybody in the working class is working for a corporation or a company in one shape, way, form or another to basically be just another another cog in the machine. For lack of a better term, we're living the matrix, just not in the matrix's actual, you know, um, storyline. OK. Um, you know. Soil and green is people. <laughs> and so we are stuck in a situation where 95% of the politicians are corrupt. Most of the uh, court system is bought and paid for. The, uh, the mainstream media narrative, whether you're talking about, you know, your standard, you know, ABC, CBS, NBC, or you're talking about MSNBC, Fox News, CNN, or you're talking about the New York Times, the Boston Globe, the LA Times, and all the other papers of record in the country, they're all paid for by their advertisers. The reason you don't really see dissenting commentary on TV is because if an advertiser gets a, a, a wind of something that they're uncomfortable with, they threaten to pull their money. It's as simple as that. In digital media right now, independent media is, is choking right now because nobody of the upper class or nobody with solid moral standing who has money is willing to put their finances behind a truth telling entity. And don't talk to me about Joe Rogan and don't talk to me about, you know, that, that dumbass Bill Maher on HBO. They're bought and paid for too. And if you don't think they are, I'm sorry, but who's paying Spotify for Joe Rogan to have a $250 million contract who owns HBO that basically pushes you know, whatever the heck Bill Maher wants to say. It's just one of those things where most of the talking heads that you see with the big followings, they are they are beholden to who's paying the bills, okay? And it doesn't matter if you're talking about left or right. You have to remember, and I've said this in other videos, and I will repeat it till the day that I die, it is not about left and right, conservative or, or, or liberal. It's about haves, the top, let's call it top, well, People would say top 1%. I'll say top 10%. The top 10% versus the other 90% of us that are working, which is why the middle class is disappearing, the working class is disappearing, the uh, ability to feed your kids is being overshadowed by the ability to feed the corporations the funding that they're robbing from our, 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 our taxes, you're sitting there today watching protests that aren't necessarily protesting about, you know, Israel and Palestine. They're protesting where our tax dollars are going and where our money is going and who we are funding that we don't necessarily want to fund. And everybody is entitled to their own opinion. But the fact that we're beating down on people who have a dissenting narrative to the mainstream narrative is basically America reliving history over and over again and not learning from the mistakes of the past. As a matter of fact, I'm going to do a video shortly that will get into that as well. But the reality of it is, is that we're sitting here in a situation where we're not 
able to really, really express our freedom of expression or our, our, our freedom of thought. And why is that? Because of the, the sort of media bubble gang mentality that happens. It's like, there's an old saying, uh, you can talk to a person and have a civilized conversation, but when a group of people are talking, you can't get a word in edgewise. You know, it's like people are good. A person is good. People suck. And that's actually very, very, very true because the leader and followers start to gang up on the individual who's actually trying to exp express a dissenting view. They're going to be people who are going to give me a hard time for what I'm just saying right now. And the truth of the matter is, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care if I get marked for any kind of, of you know, um, content violation. I don't care if I get demonetized since I'm not trying to be monetized anyway. It doesn't matter to me. Okay. And so it's that kind of freedom that allows your voice to actually be heard. And the problem is right now, those freedoms are being challenged by the people who don't want to hear dissension against not only their narrative, but their financial interest. And it's always, always, always about the money every time. Okay. And, you know, the, the saying, you know, the saying from the big Lebowski, where's the money? Lebowski is very true. Follow the money and you will see exactly where, if you can find it, you will find out exactly where the perspectives that you're hearing being pushed on in, in, in the mainstream, if you will, are coming from. You know, look at the advertisers. I've said it before and I'll say it again in this one too. Look at the advertisers. Watch CNN, watch Fox News, watch MSNBC, watch ABC. Notice the narrative, notice, notice the commercials between the content. If you look at the commercials, you won't see dissension against pharmaceutical industries when they're having pharmacy, pharmaceutical advertisements strewn throughout the show. Notice how you won't hear anything negative about bankers when you've got banks and financial, financial institutions advertising on the show. Think about it. You won't see dissension against the military industrial complex when you've got ads, recruiting ads for the U.S. Army, Marines, Navy, and Air Force. It's obvious if you pay attention to that. Most of us get up and walk out of the room, go to the bathroom, or do whatever we got to do during the commercials, right? But, but it's, a, it's a form of bribery to control the media narrative as well as of course, a repetitive brainwashing for people who are who are sitting there actually watching the advertisements, you know. Look, my dad was a Marine. I'm not anti-military at all. I'm anti-military industrial complex. There is a big, big damn difference. And if you don't think there is, well, then you weren't heeding the warnings of Eisenhower as president when he said the greatest danger in the in the U.S. to the U.S. democracy is the power of the military industrial complex. He said it, and he was an ex general who was the president of the United States. So maybe somebody with inside knowledge might have a clue. Think about it. Anyway, I've gone on a diatribe, and I apologize for that. I was just really trying to um, celebrate Chandrover's birthday, but I got sidetracked by the narrative, which, again, is a big reason why I really appreciate Megadeth. But again, I don't always or even often fully agree with um, Dave Mustaine's narratives in his lyrics, but it does engage a different part of your brain that most music, and a lot of music anyway, does not. It gets you thinking if you really pay attention to the lyrics and you're not just banging your head to the rhythm. Anyway, happy birthday to Sean Drover. Hope you all enjoyed this. I'm sure I will hear something from somebody, so feel free to drop it in the comments. It's all good. Uh, just know that I appreciate all of you, and I wish you well. Take care.